In this video we're going to talk about the levels adjustment layer and we're also going to, uh, um, which is basically a tool used to do color corrections. Uh, we're also going to talk a little bit more about uh, Photoshop in general and its sort of uh, setup. As promised in the last video I talked about there were two ways to bring in an image to Photoshop and the first one that I showed you was file open pretty straightforward. The other way that you can do this is to actually click and drag any photo from your computer into Photoshop. If I click and drag this photo, for instance, into Photoshop and drag it on top of the document that's open already, it's going to want to put that picture in as its own new layer in that Photoshop document. So that's not what we want. What you need to do is not drag it into the Photoshop document that's open, but instead drag it up to the tabs at the top. You'll notice that it'll say copy. So I'm going to click or let go of my mouse at that point, and it brings in a copy of this JPEG uh, into Photoshop. At this point, what you're going to want to do is save this as a Photoshop document. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to hit Save As, File, Save As. And I'm going to save this not as a JPEG, but as a Photoshop.psd, so a Photoshop document. I'm going to name this Image 110 Edited. And here we are. It's now a Photoshop document. It now has adjustment layers, or uh, the ability to do adjustment layers, etc. All right, so looking at this image right here, um, we're going to adjust the colors. Now this image at first glance doesn't have something necessarily wrong with it, but we're going to take a look at the colors and see what we can get. Out of it. So I'm going to come up here to my adjustments panel and click on the levels adjustment layer button. When I do that, it creates a new adjustment layer that automatically affects all of the layers beneath it. So if you want to think about these, this layer stack right here, as being a side view for what shows up here in front of you. You're looking down on top of the stack right now, and this is a side view. So this adjustment layer is on top, and the image is underneath. We'll talk about layers more another time. But for right now, um, let's look at the adjustment layers properties here that pop up in this panel. Uh, no. All right, so what we have right here is what's called a histogram. A histogram shows the distribution of the various colors uh, from darks, so the darks here on the left, to lights here on the right. I'm currently looking at all of the colors for this image, red, green, and blue. That's what RGB stands for. And I can also flip through just red, green, and blue channels of themselves to see what the distribution is for each one of those colors. As I look at these here, the histograms should span from one side of the graph to the other. And you'll notice that in this case, red doesn't. So the trick that I want to first teach you is to take these sliders and slide them so that they fit the histogram. Now this is more art than science, so if it doesn't look right to you, don't do it. What I'm going to do first is I'm going to grab my right light slider and drag it to the edge of my histogram. As I do that, notice that the reds get a little more vibrant. You know, I, it ends up looking a little more real, a little less green. Um, so I'm going to drag that into the edge of the histogram, and I'm going to try it with the others as well. Green, I'm going to drag it into the edge of the histogram. Ooh, that doesn't look good, so I'm going to back off just a little bit. Just take it in just a little bit. With blues, well, I'll let, I'll let you be the judge here <laughs> as uh, to whether or not that needs to happen. I'm guessing that I need to probably bring it in just a little bit to uh, make it not look so red. But in essence, what I'm doing here is I'm adjusting my sliders to the edges of my histogram to make sure to uh, to adjust the colors. When I've got it to a good place, I'm going to click the fast forward button at the top of the properties panel. And uh, if I want to see what it looks like without the adjustment layer, I can poke the eyeball out, change the visibility, and that's the difference. It's very subtle, very slight. Um, if I want to go in and readjust those, uh, those settings that I did, all I have to do is double-click on the adjustment layer itself, and it brings up my histograms yet again. 
All right, so that's an example of, of one just basic enhancement, just changing the colors just a little bit using the histograms. Let's try it again on a more complicated image. Um, I've been playing around with this particular image before, so I'm going to delete my adjustment layers. And uh, what you'll see here is we've got a blue image. This happens a lot on point-and-shoot cameras. It just turns out blue. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a levels adjustment layer here. And I'm going to flip through all of my various channels here, paying attention to the histogram as I go. And as I do, I notice that the red one is kind of the problem child in this set. So I'm going to drag in my histogram here. Ah, joy, but now it's red. Okay, well, maybe I'll go down to the blue. Uh, that doesn't seem right. How about the green? If I were to drag the green in... Uh, well, none of this is really working the way that I want to. So let me introduce you to a different tool here in, in the Levels Adjustment uh, layer. And that's here on the side, these eyedroppers. The eyedroppers give you an opportunity to tell Photoshop this thing, this pixel on my screen should be white, or it should be black, or it should be 50% gray. That's what these stand for, black, gray, and white. So what I'm going to do is click on the white, and my undershirt here looks like it's a pretty pure white color, or at least it should be. So I'm going to click my eyedropper on top of the white undershirt, and it will adjust the rest of the image to make that undershirt white. Well, that actually looks pretty darn good. If I wanted to try the black one, for instance, maybe I'll click on the black and, I don't know, click on this pen here in the background. Hmm, that's interesting. I like that, too. So it's really kind of your choice. The 50% gray really works well if you're taking photos, for instance, outside and you have a 50% gray sort of index card. They actually have these. And you have your subject hold it <laughs> for the first image. And then you, when you go in to edit it later, you can click on that index card in the image and it will actually adjust things for you. Uh, unfortunately for us, no such luck here. But using the white and the black, I can kind of get the effect that I'm looking for. Well, now the blue's gone, but it's too bright. So in this case, what I'll do is use my brightness and contrast adjustment layer here. And as soon as I click on it, it adds another layer that is adjusting the levels and the image. So it's adjusting both of them. So I'm going to drag my brightness down just a little bit. And uh, that's looking OK. I mean, this isn't a wonderful picture in terms of composition or, um, well, composition, it's great. I mean, the subjects are just amazing. But uh, in terms of, you know, this flash, you've got the silhouette here in the background. It's not a great picture, but with Photoshop's brightness, contrast, and levels, we can turn it from this image into this image. So it looks a little more lifelike, and it's, it's more adjusted. So at this point, what I do is go ahead and save this image, or save as and save it as a JPEG uh, just so I make sure I have something that I can take with me to Walgreens. Um, I need to start smiling more in these pictures where I'm holding Clara. <laughs> just notice that both of these I kind of look shell-shocked, which I guess is accurate for where I was in my life. But anyway, um, that's a basic introduction to the levels adjustment layer and the brightness and contrast adjustment layer. Like I said before, it's more art than science. Um, especially with that first trick of dragging the sliders in on the histogram. Um, that's, that's something you'll just have to finesse with, and, and eventually you'll, you'll get a good feel for it.